Hey there, welcome to the Electronics Channel. I'm David Williams. In this video, I'm going to talk about subnetting IPv4 networks. Now, subnetting is the process of taking a defined network and splitting it up into two or more smaller networks. So, for example, let's say I have a block of addresses, a network that's at, defined as 192.168.7.0.0.0. So there's the network address and there's the subnet mask. Now I have this particular configuration here where I have one, two, three, and four different networks. Now how do I take this set of network addresses and split it up into four parts so that I can assign IP addresses to devices in four different networks? Let's start with a slightly easier case where I have the network, same network I was talking about, 192.168.7.0/24, which has 256 IP addresses associated with it. That will be IP address 192.168.7.0 up to 192.168.7.255. So these addresses here are for the network part. They define the network. And then these addresses here in this octet can range from 0 up to 255 to define the full network. Now remember, 0 is the network address, 255 is the broadcast address, so I only actually have addresses 1 to 254 to assign to devices. But you can see one of my other videos about IP addresses and subnet masks for more details about that. Now let's say I want to split this up into two networks. I can do this very simply. I can divide this network in half where each network is then going to have 128 IP addresses. So I will end up with two different networks, each with 128 IP addresses. Another larger example is if I have a network of 10.0.0.0 slash 8, which has 16,777,216 addresses in it, and I can split this up any way I want to, but let's say I want to split this up into 256 subnets, each with 65,536 addresses. Now the total number of addresses isn't changing in either one of these two cases. All I'm doing is I'm taking those addresses and splitting them up into some number of subnets. One thing to keep in mind though is for each one of the networks, the first address in the network is the network address. The last address in the network is the broadcast address. So they are not actually assignable to devices. Each time you cut the network in half, you're actually losing two more IP addresses that can't be assigned to devices. So the actual process of subnetting involves adjusting the subnet mask. Now I've written the subnet mask here as a slash 24 and down here as a slash 8. That's in the slash notation, but remember that all that means is that's the number of ones there are before the first zero in the subnet mask. Adding a one to the subnet mask doubles the number of networks that you can have, but halves the number of IP addresses that are in each network. And again, the net number of IP addresses is not going to change, but you do lose that first and last address in your range that you can't assign to devices. So for example, in this case, I've got 256 IP addresses, 254 of them are usable. When I cut it in half, each network will have 128 addresses, only 126 are usable, so I only end up with 252 usable IP addresses. So I lose, a, I lose an IP address, but sometimes this makes sense because oftentimes you're not going to have that many devices on each network anyway, so you're just wasting IP addresses anyway. So like I said, the process of subnetting involves adjusting the length of the subnet mask so that you increase the number of networks that you have. And I think this is going to be easiest to see if I work with this example here. So remember, these octets here in the first, the first three octets are for the network. And this octet here is for the hosts. And I have addresses 0 to 255. When I split this network in half, I am adding a bit to the subnet mask. I'm going from a slash 24 to a slash 25 network. And what this means in terms of the dotted decimal notations is I went from a 255.255.255.0. This was eight bits here and I'm taking the most significant bit and I'm including it in my in my string of ones. So I've got eight 
16, 24 ones, my 25th one will be the first one there. And so that'll be a one followed by seven zeros, which is 128. And at the same time, that leaves that most significant bit to be variable for, the, for each network. So in one network, it can be a zero, and in one network, it can be a one. So for network one, it will now be 192.168.7.0 still, but the subnet mask is slash 25, where if I, if I look at these as eight bits, the most significant bit there is for the, for the network. In this case, it's a zero. All of these other bits are also zeros. This one, since this one's just staying the same, it will be a zero for all of the hosts in the subnet. So it'll still be a zero, but it, these other ones can change. And the largest they can get up to is when they're all ones, which is going to be, when that's all ones, that'll be 127. So this octet here can range from zero up to 127. Network two is 192.168.7. Dot. Well, that was where the this last octet is where the most significant bit there is a one. So when that bit is a one, if I think of it as an eight-bit number, I've got one followed by seven zeros. So that will be one twenty-eight. That's the lowest number, and the highest number will be to where that's all. Well, that one doesn't change, but all these will will be one. So I got one, and then seven ones. The range for this octet can be 128 up to 255. To so be sure to include the slash 25 there to indicate the size of the network. So in these cases where I'm just splitting a network in half and I've got a really straightforward subnet mask uh, like the slash 24, it's very easy to split the subnet. I don't even need to go through the process of looking at the subnet mask bits. I can just go, okay, well this network has 256 hosts on it. It goes from 0 to 255, so if I split that in half, I have 128 hosts for network 1, 128 addresses for network 1, and 128 addresses for network 2. So the first network is the first 128, so that was 0 to 127, and the second network has the second 128, so that was 128 up to 255. If I need to split this network up into four, well, let's just look at it in the, in the shortcut way where I just look at the range of addresses that I need and what I would get to split it into four. So it's only these bits that are changing. If I want to split it into four, I need to borrow, or I need to take two ones and add them into the subnet mask. So I go from a slash 24 to a slash 26. I have 256 addresses. I divide that into four, and that gives me 64 per network. So network one will be 192.168.7.0 slash 26 and this will give me addresses 0 up to 63. Network 2 will be 192.168.7.64 slash 26 with the range of 64 up to 127 for the IP addresses. Network 3 will be 192.168.7.128 slash 26 with the address range of 128 up to 191 and network four will be 192.168.7.192 slash 26 with the address range of 192 up to 255. Let's look at a bigger scale where I have the network 10.0.0.0 slash eight, which I mentioned before has 16,777,216 addresses in it and split it into 256 different networks. So for 256 networks, I will need to borrow eight bits. To, to start off with, this octet is the network part. These 24 bits define the 16 million plus hosts. To split this network into 256 smaller networks, I'm going to need to take all eight bits of this octet and add them to the subnet mask. So my new networks are going to be the networks where these numbers range from 0 up to 255. So network 1 will be 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Slash 16 here because my subnet mask, I needed 8 more bits for my subnet mask, so I went from 255.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 mm -hmm. 
up to 255.255.0.0 for my subnet mask. Network 2 will be 10.1.0.0 slash 16. Network 3 would be 10.2.0.0 slash 16. And I can keep going where this number is just going to keep increasing until I get to the last network, which will be network 256, which is 10.255.0.0 slash 16. So subnetting when you are splitting a network into smaller networks that are all of equal size, and the number of networks is a power of two, is a very simple process as I've shown here. If you need to split your networks into sizes that are all different, this is a little bit more challenging and is, is outside the scope of this particular video. But to just give you a clue of where I'm going with this, with this concept, you can look up the concept of variable length subnet masking. And variable length subnet masking allows you to take a network and split it up into multiple smaller networks where each one of those smaller networks is not the same size. So I hope that helps you in your understanding of subnetting IPv4 networks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.